One of the first things to notice about this problem is that the water level is rising and reaching a depth of only five feet. And if you look at the diagram, five feet in the diagram would be roughly about to here. So what this means is that the top three feet of this swimming pool are irrelevant to solving this question. So we're going to just kind of trim off those top three feet. The water level is never going to rise above five feet, and therefore those upper three feet will not matter for solving this problem. So we'll modify the pool in that manner. And then what we've done is we've come down here and we've redrawn the pool in a three-dimensional sort of configuration. And we need to come up with an equation for the volume of this sort of trapezoidal shaped pool. Now, the volume of any prism, which is exactly what this figure is, would equal the cross-sectional area multiplied by the width of the pool. Now, if we look carefully, the cross-sectional area in this particular case is going to be the area of this trapezoid right here. And hopefully we remember the formula for the area of a trapezoid from a geometry class. The area of that trapezoid is going to be one-half multiplied by the sum of the two bases. You can see we've labeled the upper base B1 and the lower base B2. So it's going to be B1 plus B2 and then multiplied by the height of the trapezoid, which we have marked as h. So that expression in brackets represents the area of this trapezoidal prism, and then we're going to be multiplying that by the width. Now, the question stated that the width of the pool was 20 feet, so we can simply plug in 20 there. Now, in order to begin filling in some useful expressions for b1, b2, and h, let's take a look at a modified version of the original diagram. Here is that diagram, which admittedly is a little bit busy, but right now let's focus our attention on the blue portion of the swimming pool, and that is where the water is actually filling up, slowly but surely. Now, just notice that as the water fills up, the bottom section right here, this length that's marked 12, that won't change. So even as the level of the pool rises, the bottom of that section of the water is going to have a constant length of 12. On the other hand, if you look at the section that we have labeled B all the way across the top surface of the pool, as the pool fills up more and more, that length is going to change. It's going to widen. So in this still image here, B has a particular length, but as you add more water, the pool will fill up more. So you might even imagine that the pool fills up you know, a few seconds later up to this level right here, notice that the length of B would increase because now the top surface of the pool would have that longer length right there. So in summary, the bottom section of the pool is a constant 12, but the upper section is changing. So we're just gonna label that B. Now the 12 and that B are going to serve as what we called earlier, base one and base two. So we can actually plug those in and start modifying our volume equation. So we'll have one half multiplied by base one, which we can just call the 12, plus base two, which we have now labeled B. And then that's still multiplied by the height of the water as it rises. And then that's still all multiplied by that width of the pool. Now we can simplify this a little bit. We could multiply the one half by the 20. Of course, that's going to give us 10. Now, the challenge that we face is this volume equation is expressed in terms of two different variables. We have it expressed in terms of what we called B, and then also the height of the rising water level. And we don't want that. We want the equation expressed in terms of just a single variable. Now, the variable that's most interesting to us in this question is actually the height, because if you go back and reread the question, it asks, how fast is the water level rising? So if we translate that into sort of calculus notation, the fact that it's asking how fast is the water level rising, that is asking us for the value of dh dt. So in other words, we want to figure out the rate of change in the height of the swimming pool. So that's our big question. 
And that variable, of course, is h. So we want to keep everything expressed in terms of h, which means h can stay in the equation, but this b right here, well, we need to rewrite that. So let's talk about how we can do so. So once again, here is that modified drawing of the swimming pool. This dimension right here is going to be labeled as x. This dimension across here is 12, as we can see from the given dimension. And then we've labeled this length here y. Now, notice that this b value right here can be rewritten as the sum of x, 12, and y. You might want to pause the video just to make sure that that makes sense. And that's great. So we can actually substitute in x plus 12 plus y back into the b in our volume equation. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to plug this expression all the way back in for this b. And then we're going to find out how we can re-express the x and the y in terms of our target variable, which you will remember is the height h. So we've gone ahead and plugged in that x plus 12 plus y for the b in our volume equation. But we still have a problem, of course, because we need to express x and y in terms of h. So going back to this diagram, why don't we take a look at some similar triangles? Now, let's look at this carefully. So you're going to have this little triangle right here. And then you're going to also have this larger triangle that is kind of subsuming that smaller one. We might want to redraw them to get a better look. So there are those two triangles, and these are similar triangles. So we could set up a proportion between their two sides. For example, we could say that x is to h as 6 is to 6. Now, of course, 6 over 6 reduces to just 1, so we actually have x over h is equal to 1. And if you multiply both sides of that by h, you can see that x can be substituted with h. So that means that this x right here will be equivalent to h. And that's great, because that was one of our goals, is to replace x with something in terms of h. We need to do the same thing with y. And in order to do that, we look at this little triangle over here, as well as the similar triangle that kind of envelops it. So it's this one here. Let's redraw those two triangles so that we can do a similar calculation to what we did over here. So there we have those two similar triangles. And just like before, we can set up a proportion. So for example, we could say that y is to h as 16 is to 6. We're going to scoot down the page. Maybe we can cross multiply. So if we cross multiplied and going this way, we'd have 16h. And then going the other way, we would have 6y. We'll divide both sides of this by 6, so 16h over 6 would equal y. And then if we reduce that by dividing the top and bottom by 2, we'll get 8h over 3 is equal to y. So that expression, 8h over 3, that's what we can substitute right here for y. And what's really nice is we now have the volume expressed in terms of just the variable h. So let's make the substitutions for x and y, and then examine what our volume equation now looks like. There we have it, and now we can continue to simplify inside the parentheses. We can add the 12 and 12 to give us 24, and then we're going to add this h and this 8h over 3. So that would be 1h plus 8h over 3. Let's find a common denominator, multiply this by 3, multiply up the numerator by 3. We will get 11h over 3. Okay, this is starting to look really nice. Why don't we go ahead and distribute the 10 to both of those terms. So 10 times 24, that's going to give us 240. And then 10 times the 11h is going to give us 110h, all over 3 still. We would then next distribute this h kind of in reverse. So that gives us the volume equals 240h plus 110h squared all over 3. This is really good now because we have the volume expressed in terms of h and it's really well simplified. So at this stage of the problem, we're ready to differentiate with respect to time. Remember, this is a related rates problem. 
In these problems, once you have your equation expressed in terms of a single variable, you want to then take the derivative with respect to time. So for example, volume, if we differentiate that with respect to time, becomes dv dt. Now, on the other side, the derivative of 240h with respect to time would be 240, but then don't forget to multiply by the derivative of the height with respect to time. A lot of students forget to multiply by that dh dt. They'll just write that the derivative is 240, but you want to make sure you also multiply by dh dt. Now, similarly over here, we're going to do kind of a power rule. So we multiply the 2 by the 110. That's going to give us 220 h, we subtract 1 from that power, so that becomes h to the 1. This is all over 3, but once again, don't forget to multiply by the derivative of the height with respect to time. Great. Now, let us notice that we have a common factor here of dh dt. So what we will do is factor that out. So we're going to factor out a dh dt, and when we do so, in the first term, that's going to leave us with 240. And in the second term, that would give us 220h over 3. Now, we recall the question was asking how fast is the water level rising. So we're actually trying to solve for dh dt, which means we're going to divide both sides of this by the term 240 plus 220h all over 3. We'll do this on both sides. That will cancel it out on the right-hand side, so let's rewrite what we presently have. Okay, now it's just going to be a simple matter of plugging in the given values. We can start with the dv dt. This is the rate of change in the volume of the swimming pool with respect to time. If you look at the data right here, particularly if you look at the unit, you have feet cubed per minute. Hopefully we understand that when they say feet cubed, that's a unit of volume. And then of course, minutes is a unit of time. So that 0.8 will be plugged in for dv dt. And then, of course, they said that the deepest point is 5 feet. That simply means that the height of the pool will be 5. So let's plug in those values. Okay, and then we probably would like to pick up a calculator and sort of simplify that. In this case, you reduce it to 3 over 2,275. Thank goodness for a calculator there. And if you want to simplify that in terms of a decimal, that looks like it's about 0 0.00132. So that would be the approximate answer. And for the units, let's just kind of notice here that we have height divided by time. So the height in this case would be measured in feet and the time was measured in minutes. So for either answer, we could use feet per minute to represent the correct unit. And these will be the correct answers to the question, both in exact and approximate form.